uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We are dealing, we are looking at um, facing your giants. We started off by saying that um, if you're going to face a giant who is like a Goliath, what you need is courage. Because Goliath would intimidate you. And we said if there is any Goliath that is trying to intimidate you, all oh, what you need is courage in God. Da David had courage in God and Goliath came down. Last Sunday we, we looked and we said one of the biggest challenge we have is that we look at the person that has brought the message and we are angry with the person, the messenger. But if you're going to deal with that enemy, that giant of receiving bad news and instead of being angry with the person that has brought the news, Job knew. And after all the messages came, Job declares that he knows that when he came naked and he will go back naked and he gave praise to God. He knew this battle is not just physical. He knew there was a God and that is where his help came from. And I pray that you and I can know, don't struggle with the postman, don't struggle with the, with, the, with the man who brings the message. Look deep and see where is the message, the source of the message who, which is coming your way. And today we want to look at another giant. This is an awesome giant and the giant is called bitterness. Bitterness. Ephesians 4 uh, verse 30 to 32. Ephesians 4 verse 30 to 32. Listen to what the Bible says. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, underline that, and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking, all that put together, be put away from you with all malice, anything that is not saying anything good about our God. And be ye kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Bitterness as a giant. Someone called Charles Dickens has written a book, Great Expectations, and in that book of Great Expectation, in one of the chapters, somebody called Peep is called to a house of a Mrs. Havisham. She was now old and the house was kept completely dark with thick, thick shades so that the sun could not even peep in. And the only light allowed into the house was the light from candles. When Peep first went into the room, he could see that she was dressed all in white. The room was prepared as if she was preparing for something, and yet something was quite peculiar about it. Or his eyes, as his eyes adjusted, he could see the veil tossed behind her head was all tattered and had grown old. It was once white, but was now faded and old. Yet, she wore one shoes, and one shoes sat on a dressing table ready to be worn. Yet, it appeared it had never been worn or touched. All the clocks in that room, all the watches in that room, had stopped 20 minutes to nine. 20 minutes to nine. It was at that very moment, 20 minutes to nine, that she had learned that her groom, who was going to marry her, had got and married another. And it is 20 to 9 at that moment. Her life stopped and she could not move forward no more. According to our passage, no believer has a right to be bitter. We are told that we are to release all bitterness. Release all bitterness. And that is to be completely put away from us. And this requires action on our part. You must release the bitterness 
because it will never release you. Once this giant called bitterness holds you, unless you release it, it will never release you. You may cut the tip of the weed off, the tip of the weed, but unless it, you go to the root and you root it out, you'll never be free from it. So don't cut it. Go down and pull it from the root. A few things that we're going to say about this giant and then we'll be done. The first one, there is what we'll call contamination of bitterness. Bitterness contaminate. In the book of Hebrews 12 and verse 14 and 15, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see God or the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. The words follow after mean to make an eager pursuit, to run swiftly in order to catch a person. You want to do it quickly. Bitterness troubles both you and regrettably many around you. Bitterness will not only bring you down, but even people around you will have quite a challenge. Bitterness contaminates. Anybody bitter has a way of causing many others to be bitter. If you are bitter, my brother, my sister, wherever you are watching it, maybe you can identify a few people that you have also contaminated with the same bitterness. You know, sometimes you look at our children, or I look myself with my father, and some of the things that I, uh, I saw, which I'm doing, which maybe my children are doing and their children will do, and sometimes when you look at those children, you see yourself Bitterness as a way of contaminating. You become bitter, your spouse becomes bitter, your children become bitter, your house technician becomes bitter, and the whole house becomes bitter. The causes of bitterness, what are they? Causes of bitterness. And I want here, please follow me quickly, because if you want to kill this giant then look at those causes. What are the causes of bitterness? Ruth chapter 1 verse 20. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Lord has dealt very bitterly with me. This woman was so bitter, not with herself, but with God. Sometimes bitterness is interesting. You, it, you, it is like, you have to away. And that's why you need to know the cause. The cause. Where do bitterness come from? Number one, or a bitterness, come from willful ignorance of the providence of God. You know, I have lost a lot of good friends. And this week I've been wondering, I, yesterday we buried one of those friends of mine and I followed the funeral uh, through the, the virtue of I said this. God has not spared me because I am good. Neither has God taken them because they are bad. But God is sovereign. I have to know the sovereignty of God so that I can also be ready when my time comes, the sovereignty of God. When it happens, then I will. I will go. The sovereignty of God. Wonderful. But when we ignore the providence of God, then bitterness has a way of cropping in. This ignorance results in a failure to accept the messenger. To accept the messenger. To accept the message that it has come from God. To accept the situation. What Naomi ought to have done is to accept the situation. And I want to bet with you, she was not the only widow. 
in those Bible days. There were many others. But she became so bitter with God. Hudson Taylor says this. How the tendency of resentment, resentment and a wrong feeling would be removed. Could we take an injury from the hand of a loving father? And instead of looking chiefly at the agent through whom it comes to us, it matters not who is the postman or the mailman or the messenger. It is with the writer of the letter that we are concerned. It matters not who is the messenger. It is with God that his children have to do it. These are the works of Hudson Taylor. Ignorance. Friends, if you want to have bitterness, forget about God. You'll be bitter with the government. You'll be bitter with your employer. You'll be bitter with yourself. But if you know the providence of God, that sometimes I have provision, I have plenty, sometimes I don't. He is God in the good times and the bad times. Can you imagine that? He is God. He is God. Providence of God. I know we don't like talking about when I am low. But we all get to that low moment. Very low moment. But if we, we will acknowledge God and not be ignorant of his providence, then we will not be bitter at all. Some of us are bitter with the president of this country. Others are bitter with the system. Others are bitter with so many things. But I pray that you not allow bitterness to push you down, but that you are going to release yourself from it and thank God for the providence and thank God because he is God in all the moments and all seasons. Where does this bitterness come from? Number two or big, it comes from refusing to release the offender. The offender. We are looking at a character in the Bible called Ahithophel. Ahithophel was the most trusted counselor of King David. Many have wondered why Ahithophel went from being a trusted counselor to a vengeful or vengeful enemy. What happened? Let's look at some scriptures. Remember what I've said is that when you refuse to, re to release the offender. 2 Samuel 11 and verse number 3. And Evan sent and inquired about the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? 2 Samuel 15:31. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. We are still looking at some scriptures. Second Samuel 23 and 34. Elphelet, the son of Ashibai, the son of Mashithiti Eliam, the son of Ahithophel, the Kilonite. Hey, Kilonite. Kilonite. Amen. Second Samuel 16 verse 20 up to 17 verse 2. Then said Absalom to Haithophel, give counsel among you what we shall do. Let's, 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 let's continue. We are going up to uh, chapter 17 verse 2. And Adivel said unto Absalom, Go unto thy father's concubines, which he has left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art abode of thy father. Then shall the hands of they all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went into his father's concubines in, this, in sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was of if a man had inquired at the oracle of God, so was all the counsel of Ahithophel both with David 
and with Absalom. Moreover, Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Let me now choose out 12,000 men, and I will arise and pursue after David this night. Verse 2. And I will come upon him while he is weary and weak-handed, and I will make him afraid, and all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only. Remember what we are saying. We, we are looking at the very, the very fact that if you refuse to release the person that has offended you, if you are not able to release that bitterness, what it is going to do. And it can change someone that was very close to you and became, becomes an enemy to you. So when you look at that story, this is the man who counsels David's son to go into his father's wives or concubines and get one as a wife and have everybody see it. That is the man. So what happened is that he, he goes behind the friend. So when David got this, it consumed him. So while there can be no doubt that David did wrong by the granddaughter of Ahithophel, it is also obvious that Ahithophel was the one consumed and eventually destroyed by the wrong. He refused to release the offender. And I think it is good for you to go and read the whole story of, uh, 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 of um, Ahithophel because I might not have all the time. It consumed him and he was looking for a way to avenge it. And he found it. So first of all, he wants to embarrass David and he's saying he's going to kill him. If you don't release the offender, it will kill you. A story is told, or today I have a story. A story is told of two men that were walking, and as they walked, they were going to cross a river, and at the river bend, they saw a, a woman, an old woman, that was there not knowing how to cross the river. And at that point, she did not know what to do, and she was upset that there was no bridge there. Just like you and I can get upset that there is no way you can get to Mombasa now that we are locked up in Nairobi. So she was so bitter, there was no bridge. And she could not get across on her own. So the man came and said, woman, can we help you close the river? She said, yes, thank you. So the two men held their hands together and they carried her across the river. And they, when she landed, she went her own way and the men continued with their journey. One of the men says this. Let's call him the second man. The second man said this. Look at my clothes, he said. They are filthy all because I carried that old filthy woman across the river. The other one never said anything. So he continued, the second man continued, he said, and my back is aching and I have pain all over because of carrying that heavy, good for nothing, dirty woman. The other one said nothing. So they kept on going and after they had gone a couple of kilometers, the second man said again, now I'm hurting everywhere. I cannot even go now. I have to sit down. Then he called the person. He said, but you have not said anything. And the man looked at him and smiled and said, yes, because I left everything, all the bitterness of carrying that woman and the feeling of pain I left it. I released it. Your back is hurting. Your back is aching. Because the woman we carried 
you are still carrying her now on your back. I hope you understand this. Bitterness, it has a way of changing location. Maybe it was in your chest, now it might come on your back. Release this giant called bitterness. Number three or C, how do, do I handle this? This bitterness comes from removal of perceived rights. You can be bitter to your spouse because of some rights. You can be bitter with your nation because of some rights. When there are some perceived right, maybe they are not right right, but they are just perceived right, those perceived right can cause you to have bitterness. I want you to look with me, John 4 and verse 9. This is a man. Actually, this man was so bitter. Why? Because God had answered prayer. And God said to Jonah, doesn't, doesn't, does, yeah, you do well to be angry for the good. And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. That's what he's saying. When Jonah, we are told he was Kiparangoto. So the sun was so hot on him. So he is calling on God. God, remember me. And God gives him a flower. First of all, a tree grows in a couple of hours. And it has enough shade in a couple of hours. And the guy is so peaceful in a couple of hours. But God discovers this man is still so bitter with what God did. So what does God do? He kills the same thing. And in the same hour, the tree dries up. So, inakuja upesi, inakauka upesi. And the guy was so mad. Na, mungu na muongelesha, wewe, basi nisawa ungiakua. Na, inasama, ndiyo, nisawa, ningiakua ni na hasira, kali, sana, ata kukufa. When we believe we have a right to something, and it is removed, anger, frustration, bitterness, developed. Your husband has been removed. Your wife has been removed. Your child has been removed. Your job has been removed. Anger, bitterness, frustration can come upon you. Because of perceived right. I am whom I am by the grace of God. I do this work by the grace of God. My business is thriving by the grace of God. There is nothing I have done. Absolutely nothing. If you approach life like that, this giant called bitterness, we are going to bring him down in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, sometimes you feel like preaching and you want guys to give high five in the, in the auditorium. But you know, friends, I can see you are there. I can see you are there. So you can do it wherever you are. Lastly, or number three, the characteristics of bitterness. What are the characteristics of bitterness? This giant, how does it, how can you see it? If you see this, would you know this is the giant called bitterness? The characteristic of bitterness, number one or A, is that bitterness remembers details. Wewe, 1930, ilikuwa ni asubui, ilikuwa na saatano, Na nusu na sekunde ukanimwagia maji. Yani, you have carried those bitterness from 1920. And you can remember details. That's what bitterness can do. Which means if you allow it, it will choke you. There are some of you listening to me. You have bitterness on the day of your wedding. Something did not go right. And you have been married for 40 years. Bitterness still thrives on the day of your oratio. And you still carry those bitterness. Release yourself from those bitterness. And you'll be a free man. Ah, some of you is a Sunday school teacher. Ule mwalimu alikufinya. You still remember that. And that bitterness will kill you. That giant will destroy you. Oh, Bishop, you don't understand what she did to me. Yeah, bitterness, ikona details. So if you have details over anything, bitterness is going to cry. Actually, there are some of you that tell each other, 
juzi hii ukanifanyia hiyo juzi ile nyingine ukanifanyia ile juzi nyingine ukanifanyia yani you have details why don't you have the good things details so that your spirit and your heart can be healed can be well hallelujah bitterness remembers details memory is helped by review and we use this in school and we use it also when we are bitter memory inarudisha hata picha na nguo ulikuwa umevaa na kiatu ulikuwa umevaa you know you know sometimes I might, I might ask you what were you wearing last sunday and you say you can't remember but let me tell you if you are bitter over something you remember the color of the shoes the dress you wore because the memory your memory is packed with the bitterness that giant will kill you two bitterness accuses others and excuses self we accuse we excuse the book of james chapter 3 verse 14 to 18 but if you have bitter envying and strive in your hearts glory not and lie not against the truth this wisdom descended not from above but is earthly sensual and devilish for where envying and strife is there is confusion and the every evil work but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is shown in peace of them that make peace you see bitterness believes what it wants to believe and this is lying against the truth may god help us some of the bitterness that we carry have no root in themselves why don't you ask the other person when you said this did you mean this or what did you mean instead of carrying bitterness that this person did this and did the other number c bitterness bitterness lives alone bitterness in a kaga peke yake matthew 6 and 15 But if you forgive not men their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses the other person ceases to be the real issue or you may not believe this but it is true you live the life of unforgiven carrying around the bag the baggage of unforgiveness that is a very heavy load to carry bitterness refuses to be reconciled primarily to god although we think it is the person who has done the offending we refuse to be recon- reconciled it is really not dependent on another person it begins with the offense of another but then grows independently of them yani bitterness inakuwa yule jamaa ashaenda vyake asha mwingine ashaenda majuu na bado remember the story i gave you that woman was dead but she was dead with a wedding dress that she was old she died an old woman but she refused to cease 20 to 9 she was not alive from 20 to 9 the time she was going to get married but now she was old there and dead having dresses ready to go for the wedding i refuse you know listen to me i refuse to be carried over by somebody who has gone on and enjoying their life I will not allow bitterness. Somebody said this. Shida kubwa yako na yangu ni kuinama. Mtu anakuwekelea mzigo. Anakuwekelea bitterness. Sasa wewe unaenda umeinama na yeye anaenda amesimama. Ah 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 ah. Simama wima akiweka iteremke. Akiweka bitterness naenda chini. Kini ukikaa hivi uwekelewe mzigo hapa utabeba gunia na itakuumiza sana. Bitterness anakaaga peke yake. In other words, the offender could even offer an apology or even be dead. 
but the offense and bitterness lives on. You le <laughs> Some of you have taken you to encounter. And I'm asking you, who do I represent? And you are saying, your great-grandfather. And I'm asking, what did your great-grandfather did? My great-grandfather hakupatia guuka shamba. Nae guuka haku anashamba hakupatia baba. Kwa hivyo mimi sina. I don't... Friends, that guy, long time ago, he's not even there. Live your life. Live your life. The offender could be dead. You need another person to represent them so that you can ask for forgiveness and move on. Settle and move on. Whew, sometimes you feel like preaching. Bitterness reveals itself. It's another characteristic of bitterness. Bitterness was nanganyo na mtu. Ata mkiyowana na mtu na mkaya miakadhate. Kama hako na bitterness, siku moja inazuka. Na unasikia watu wa megongana, moja wa mededi. Kwa sababu bitterness, kuna kakitu itazuka tu. Bitterness reveals itself. James 3 and verse 11. Do the fountain send forth at the same place with water and bitter. And the answer is no. It can't. You can't mix the two. A cup of juice that is sweet cannot spill a drop of bitter juice. Even if you shook it, it won't. Even after shaking it, it will still be sweet. And that's what you and I ought to be. You can't be sweet and shaken, you're bitter. Then it simply means if you're shaken and you're bitter, you've been bitter all the time. You've been looking for an opportunity to be shaken. The cure of bitterness. Hebrews 12 and verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble, you and thereby many be defiled. Receive the grace. If you want to overcome bitterness, receive the grace of God. That's point number one. Receive the grace of God. The opposite of failing of the grace of God, the opposite is to receive the grace of God. Therefore, receive the grace of God. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore Come boldly unto the throne of grace. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in times of need. Times when bitterness wants to bring its ugly head. Let's go boldly to the throne of God to find grace. Number two, you want to cure bitterness, my brother, my sister. Number two, take ownership. Own it. If you want to release bitterness, you have to own it, then release it. You have to say, here you are, and I release you. Bitterness must be owned independently. Don't cover it and coat it with many things. There can be no joint ownership. And there are so many people actually who are bitter. You only trigger something small and you can see bitterness coming. And we try to hide bitterness by saying, I'm just easily hurt. Or I will forgive him when he is truly sorry. Say it nicely. Say sorry nicely. You know, there is no saying sorry nicely. When I say I'm sorry, I'm sorry, then look for the fruits of my being sorry. Because if you don't, then you'll become the judge and the jury of the case. You are the one who is going to decide whether they said well or they said they did not say well. But God from the throne, when we tell him, God forgive me, he forgives us. And he removes us from where our sins are. Release the offender. That's number three. Release the offender. Release both the offense and the offender. Bitterness will not only finally release you, it must be released because it will not release you. You must release both the offense 
and the offender. It must be dug out. The root must be dug up and fresh soil of new growth be put in its own place. We have, let's not allow sin. We have not to allow sin anywhere near us. It can't just disappear. We have to release it and release ourselves. Release ourselves. Jesus took our sin upon himself. Why carry what he already forgave us? Bitterness is a giant and it has killed many. Many people. And people have lived and have wondered. My husband was not this. My wife was not this. My son was not this. My employer was not this. But if they carried bitterness, they were waiting for a time of shaking so that what was inside can come out. But if you are sweet, even if there is a shaking, you will still be sweet. I want to finish by saying this. Think about yourself as, as an oyster. An oyster takes a grain of sand and it turns that grain of sand into a very beautiful pearl. Very beautiful, precious stone. Too often, we are just opposite. We take the pile, that precious stone, and we turn it into sand. We want it to be sand. My prayer is this. Has God sent you a grain of sand? Can you turn it into a pile? As a minister, my plea to you, my brother, my sister, don't be the one that will turn the pile into Sand. Shall we pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, the giant called bitterness, we want to release ourselves from its grip in the name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we pray that we will not allow any root of bitterness, anything related to bitterness, to be close to us. But instead, Heavenly Father, we will be sweet. We will seek to glorify you in everything that dear Father comes our way. And dear Father, we will always think about your providence so that we don't ignore the providence of God and become bitter in situations and circumstances. And Heavenly Father, that in this month that we are getting into prayer, I pray that God Almighty, you will help us first of all, not to pray in bitterness, but to pray in faith and by faith in God who answers prayers. We'll pray for various issues. We'll pray for our nation. We'll pray for our families. we pray for the pandemic. we pray for various issues. But Lord, we pray that our heart will be clean so that our prayers can be answered. And Lord God, I pray that as we lift up the nation, our needs will also be lifted up. As we pray, dear Father, for those that need you, for in this season, we pray that our needs will also be met. And therefore, mighty God, I declare that our month of prayer, the 24-7 chain of prayer, is blessed. And that none of us will faint along the way. But I speak boldness and courage and grace to go through. I do thank you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. I don't know where you're watching us from. And maybe you're saying, Bishop, why can't you pray for me? Bitterness. I feel bitter over many things. Bitter bitterness of my academic achievement. Bitterness of my business. Bitterness in my family, bitterness, some bitterness I carry are for many generations. And you are saying, Bishop, pray for me. I want to pray for you, a simple prayer. And this is the prayer. Father, every one of us, dear Lord, that is bound by bitterness, we want to speak a release. I want you to release your bitterness now in the name of the Lord. Release it. Release your bitterness. 
Release the offense and release the offender. Say, I forgive you so and so. And I release this that was done to me. And may you receive refreshing from the throne of God. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and give you a great week.